Hi and welcome. I'm Tommy Holst, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Release Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. Today we will cover poster classics, Two Goats, Michael Jordan, and Matt Ferguson, as well as some of the films you love reimagined in poster form. In a close-up interview, we will talk to the ever so elusive Andy Fairhurst, who was so kind to have his first interview with us. So thank you so much, Andy. Uh, it's really appreciated. Stay tuned and head over our to, ins- to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we're talking about or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. These are the posters that we have uh, that we will cover today. You, you can see it on the left side here. And uh, we will start out with the first one by uh, Rico Jr. is his uh, name. And he did this Incredibles piece, which went online for a pop culture art company. And it is a lithograph that is hand numbered and the size is 18 by 24. And there's an edition of 90 pieces only. I think a couple were still available while I was checking two days ago. And um, this is a very cool piece. Uh, really, uh, really goes well along with the Toy Story one he did. Um, I think in December it was. And uh, there will be some other ones coming. He had a very cool Harry Potter series, which was really great. And... Um, He's doing a lot of cool stuff, so check him out on Instagram. Um, I showed it down there in the bottom, so you can follow that. Um, he's a really cool artist. There's going to be some more cool stuff in the future for him. The next one we're going to talk about is by none other than Francesco Francavia, who did this Rambo, Rambo First Blood Part 2 piece for Mondo in cooperation with Nautilus. This is a 24 by 36 uh, version and it's a 250 edition piece. This uh, is the regular variant, which is really cool. I really love the colors on this one. I like it even better than the variant one. The variant one is this one here in blue and it's an um, edition of 85. Very cool piece, Francesco Margavilla, he knows what he's doing and I, I, had, I was looking at the, his shop lately because he'd had, uh, um, had it up some of his art stuff he was doing like his like i think it was like is it ink paintings what he's doing but he had that up and that was really cool to see um and it was in his shop so uh check out sometimes there's some pieces left as a 250 for an og there's a one of one edition and he did one of Darth more for example which was really really cool and yeah this uh, piece by him for mondo is also really great and i think there's going to be more collaboration in the future because this was not the first one i showed you guys um last time we had the invisible man one we were talking about Okay, the next one is by Johnny Dombrowski, and he did The Return of the Living Dead. Um, there's also a variant edition. Um, the size is, as well as the Rambo piece, 24 by 36. Um, this is the regular one, 175 uh, exists of these ones, or they're sold, <laughs> I guess. They're not available anymore, I think, at Mondo, because... You know how Mondo works. They're sold out so quick, and um, yeah, the variant edition is really cool because this kind of pink color is i think really fitting um i like i like the this is i think this is a good variant because this gives you more of a of variety in in this case i mean it's different from the regular version i just showed you and um i think i enjoy this one a little bit better the variant here in this case so johnny dabrowski did a good job on this one covering all the main characters and uh, the zombies in this case and um yeah, it's a, it's a very cool piece. Another Mondo collaborator is Edward Kinsella. We talked about him um, when we were talking to Greg Ruth because he was a fan and he um, collects his art as well or has a couple of pieces up in his office. So um, this one was very interesting. I never seen the film, uh, Barbarian Sound Studio. I think it was from 2012 or something like that. Um, a film by Peter Strickland which is a really cool piece and um i I like the way uh this this kind of is produced with um what's what's his name i want to say toby but i I forgot his last name but yeah the actor is uh it's put in a cool perspective here looking at the mouth that is coming out and he listening listening to it i think it's a very cool a spin on it as well as the um the the font that that he used or the lettering he used 
which is a really cool one and this is there's no variant edition it's the only one and it's co-released with black dragon press and uh it's 18 by 24 and there's a um a hand numbered edition of 100. and now we get into the next one which is also released by mondo and they teamed up with the phantom city creative and they released this tiger tiger piece or there's a whole batman the animated series um, there have been some before in in, in um in the past and also mondo did a couple we covered uh, last week's one uh or two weeks ago was juan ramos's uh, the animated series piece and he will be on in october by the way so uh looking forward to that um yeah, this tiger tiger piece is really cool i think it's a really cool take on the animated series is 18 by 24 edition of 225 um this piece is i think there's also a variant edition um i didn't take that one i'm, I'm not sure right now but yeah this tiger tiger piece is really cool uh, except the episode is not that cool um but the, the the artwork is really wonderful phantom city creative did a really really cool job on that and um, there's also another one, it's Night of the Ninja. I posted now the, the, this, the, the variant edition and it's also 18 by 24 and there's 125 of this. And it's a better episode in my opinion, but um, I think this, I, I don't like it that much. It uh, incorporates, the, uh, incorporates the martial art aspect of this, but um, I th I think I don't like the composition composition as well as on the Tiger Tiger one, and but it's just in comparison of them. They're both uh, great pieces, I think, and uh, they did a really good job. Phantom City Creative all, always doing a good job. I can't can't remember a piece that I didn't like of them. So um, yeah, also cool addition. And there are two more which go into the Superman aspect, the animated series. And the first one we're gonna look at is this piece. It's the Superman one, and it uh, has a weird size. It has uh, 36 by 18, and there's the Superman edition is 225. And I think it covers Superman, the animated series, really well. And uh, obviously, the iconic Superman in there uh, looks really great. You see Metropolis in the background, really cool. The, the blues and the, the red of Superman's cape and uh, shoes and pants look really good in comparison so i i really look forward for the screen printed uh, piece of that um if somebody has it because the color must really really pop well i think and uh, if you have this kind of contrast uh they did also like it's not a variant per se but they did a bizarro piece which is has the same format and has superman at the same basically thing or like the, the position and uh, Bizarro is looking down on his city and I think it's a really really cool one and they also wrote like little text which is uh, really funny so uh, check that out on their website they did it on, on the blog page you can find it and uh, it's also 36 by 18 125 as I mentioned and uh, I like this one uh, really much, uh, a lot because this focus is not on Superman but on a different version of superman and um i think this is more interesting than all the pieces i mean superman we've seen a lot so um i love this bizarre piece uh, colors i wonder how the colors are and um, i like the superman colors better because the contrast of it but um the pieces are similar in their concept idea so uh good job on that uh, the animated series one uh, phantom city creative Okay, the next one we're going to talk about, this one is really cool. I really enjoy this one. I teasered you already in the introduction that there's going to be the goat on, and this is the goat, uh, the, the goat I'm talking about is Michael Jordan. There's this piece by Rich Pellegrino, um, and he he did this, I think it was a timed edition for Spokesart, and this is on archival, an archival pigment print, and it's 17 by 22, which is a weird size, I know. And uh, there's also two uh, remark versions um, that that came out with this. And the the artist did, did these little remarks. I'll show you here. There's going to be on the on the bottom here. There's going to be the shoe as a remark, for example, or some other element like a trophy. They said maybe I think it was a ring, like one championship ring, maybe, and other stuff. So I'm excited to see what what they actually like how how the remarks look like. So. Uh, if people have it soon in six to eight week, weeks i think it it is and uh check that out 
um, it is definitely worth it. I, I mean, for the remarks itself, I think it's worth it. And having like all the other characters on there, we have Magic on there, we have Card Malone, we have, uh, I think it's Patrick Ewing, is it? Is it Patrick Ewing? I think it is. And then there's, uh, is it Isaiah Thomas? I think. Larry Bird and Charles Barkley on there. So all like the 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 people he had to go through, as, speaking of Michael Jordan, um, that was really cool. Uh, here's a little close-up of the Remark shoe, which looks really awesome. There's, there's also been a video on it um, when... Um, when like his pro process of doing this and he also did the michael jordan ones here in the bottom this is really cool i really love this one so um the remarks are really great i really i actually have to say I, i'm sorry Rich, but i like the remarks even more than the uh print itself but the print itself is also really cool he's like a super saiyan basically uh having his like his basketball goat powers and uh yeah that's that's a that's some really cool stuff uh, that can be seen here and uh, i will link you the video for uh it's on vimeo, vimeo i think or you can find it on, on uh, the spoke art website under this print uh, the, you can see the process where he is do drawing those remarks which is like really cool to see Another Spokesart release is by Joshua Budic, and he did this Once Upon a Time, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood piece, which has the characters and all of that. And I heard before because like I had I interviewed him, and it's gonna come out in August, so in like in a month. And uh, we were talking about this piece because it just came out when we were talking about it, and people were complaining about the neck of Brad Pitt. And he told me actually it is the real neck. It is uh, he has the, the the reference photo to like go from it, and uh, that's how it is. He has a weirdly neck, and maybe it was the angle. I don't know, but uh, it is all 100% correct. So <laughs> people don't don't complain. This this is the way how it how it is shown, and uh, that's Brad Pitt's neck. I think it's a really cool composition with the Hollywood sign and like the letters next to like the characters from the movie, which is really cool here. And um, yeah, it's a 24 by 36 piece. There was an edition of 100 on the regular, ver uh, on the regular version, and there's this holofoil uh, variant version, which uh, was available 50 times on rainbow foil. Uh, really cool. I really enjoyed this. And uh, once upon a time, Hollywood was not maybe my favorite movie, but um, this artwork is really great, and even has uh, Margot Robbie's character. Um, like in, on, on the scale and uh, I think that's, that's very cool to see not having Rick Dalton um, in, in, in the middle and as big um, as his character maybe was for the movie but I think also my favorite character was Brad Pitt's version in this movie okay um, the next one is by Ize Ananfada I hope I pronounced that right and I um had the pleasure surely talking to Izzy and um, it's not ready. He's not ready for uh, coming on the show because of the English, but maybe we will get it, uh, get some uh, look at the art there soon. So stay tuned and uh, maybe there's going to be an interview in the future. But um, this beautiful Life Aquatic piece is really, really great. And I saw this was uh, for a bottleneck uh, canceled screening. Bottleneck did, did do the screening from time to time where, um, for example, the John Wick came from when they did that last year in July. I think oh, yeah, it's almost a year ago. And um, this one here is uh, really cool and The Life Aquatic, really great movie. It captures all the scenes. It has the, the, the Jaguar shark in here. It has the boat and everything. It's like, oh, it's like really, really great. I really enjoy this piece and it goes very well with all the Wes Anderson pieces Easy did before. So um, everybody who got lucky to get one of those pieces, I think it was in a fan group. So uh, check out those fan groups if you uh, want to get some exclusive stuff sometimes or have the chance on really cool stuff a little early. The fan groups on Facebook, they help a lot um, with doing this. And um, yeah, this, this piece, as I said, is really beautiful. Uh, sadly, Bottleneck had to cancel it. I don't know how many uh, were there available. Probably when they when they do it for the same um, movie theater. I think it was around 150. So 150 prints of these. And um, yeah, it's 24 by 36. And uh, it is going for crazy money right now, I think, uh, in the aftermarket. So <laughs> a lot of people... Um, 
a lot of people had like uh, or made good money off that print if they sold it uh, and likely get it but i would definitely keep it if i would have had the chance to get one this next piece is by Dolly, and he um, did this Jurassic Park piece in, uh, for Bottleneck and Vice Press. They did a co-release on there. It's 18 by 24. There was an edition of 200 of it. And this piece is really cool. I really enjoyed it uh, because of its simplicity. If you look at it, um, he kept it very simple by just putting like this dinosaur egg of a Velociraptor in uh, the grass there. And uh, this embodies like everything of this movie uh the velociraptors who played an important part of it which were which was really cool then the the cloning and the eggs which is also a really cool aspect of it and i think um this is uh this is a really um really interesting uh print and i love the details of the, of the grass and everything and that he used the background like it's like kind of shell color uh which is really cool so uh, Dolly, good job on that. And uh, also, if you like more of Dolly stuff, check out our, our other interview that we did with him. Uh, the long one, I think it was like like almost two hours. So uh, he explained a lot of stuff. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, check in on him. He He's a really, really great artist. So if you don't know him yet, that's your chance to get to know him a little bit better. The next one is a classic. And this classic is Back to the Future. There were multiple editions. They had the titles on. There was variant editions of uh, the single pieces. Um, this is by Drew, Struz by Drew Struzan. And he is like, yeah, I don't have to say anything more, I guess. He's like, he's the GOAT. He's also a GOAT. So yeah, I didn't mention him in, in, in the GOAT part. But yeah, Drew Struzan um, did this Back to the Future piece uh, for Back to the Future 3 um, for the release back then. And this is a this is also a co-release with Vice Press, and they did a 24 by 36 edition. This one piece was 400, and the variant was 225 times available. And uh, there was also a non-title um, treatment where where the, there were no credits, there's no uh, actor's name, and there's no title in there. So that's a that's a really cool piece as well. If you like it really simple and just want to focus on the art as, and just, instead of the movie poster aspect, there was also a chance to get that. So um, yeah, Vice Press uh, and Bottleneck they do very cool releases together. So stay tuned in the future for those pieces. And now I'm coming to the third goat in this case, Matt Ferguson. I think the poster, I, I mentioned it last time when we, were, when we had the release section, I, I covered it a little bit and uh, it was done before uh, the, the poster came out. So uh, like official as a release. So I didn't include it last time. I just spoke on it uh, in an Instagram story. But this piece here is just incredible the empire strikes back key art i think he was one of the few artists who ever did uh, empire strikes back key art and i think Drew struzan was the last one who did that so uh, i think he mentioned it in a post somewhere so this is this is just an incredible piece for the 40th anniversary and um the regular version uh, was a timed edition by bottleneck and uh, vice press and uh or was it only by bottleneck i'm not sure right now but yeah, I mean, Matt Ferguson is like one of the founders of Vice Press, so maybe maybe it was on Vice Press as well. And a couple different um, couple different website had it. I think Polls had it, and um, somebody else had it, but I, I don't remember who it was. But yeah, Bottleneck was the, the the main release of this of this great piece of art. And uh, the other regular version they had was was Japanese lettering, which is like really really cool, really really cool. I really enjoyed this. Um, and when it comes to the to the regular editions, I I'm more of a fan of the um, or if I compare them both, I like the 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 English version better on this piece because I think that it's more compact in terms of the title treatment. But uh, when you look at the like this the the, the variant, which is uh, which I was lucky to get as well, um, this piece here. And with metal neon inks in there oh, I, I can't wait to have it in person and hang it up this is such a great piece unbelievable a talent and uh, yeah people are saying this is one of the posters of the decade and uh, yeah we will have the chance to talk next week to matt ferguson so i'm really excited about that and uh 
yeah, this this an unbelievable piece. I'm still in awe of this, and a lot of people think it's the it's one of the greatest posters of the decade, and uh, I think so too. It's like uh, as like I, I can I can happily die now, basically having started with a Matt Ferguson and having one of the best posters uh, of the decade, and yeah, this one is it. There's also the Japanese version, which I like better in the um, in, in in this variant piece. And uh, I think it's great. It's great stuff. And uh, I have to mention again, because uh, I was lucky that uh, Bottleneck hooked me up. So Bottleneck, thank you guys for um, uh, for making this possible. It's really, really appreciated. And uh, you are the nicest guys and the best gallery. Uh, I've been there personally. You always did like you always just, like surprised me with stuff. And um, I've been a customer for a long time. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you again for making this possible. And uh, yeah, maybe we can do something in the future together. Uh, I know you guys don't want to come on the podcast because you're all shy, but it's fine and good. But maybe at some point I can have you on. So um, bear with me. <laughs> maybe in the future, guys. Everybody else uh, knows that as well. Okay, so now it's time for our artist of the week, which is Andy Fairhurst. He's been very elusive so far. I tried to. Uh, get in touch with him um, I got in touch with him actually but he didn't want to show up on the camera and I think for everybody especially uh, for you Don out there it's going to be very hard <laughs> to fathom that I got this wonderful artist on Andy how you doing my man hello I'm good thanks yeah, I'm doing alright I mean uh, the situation is still going on still corona in the world uh, for you guys and over in Great Britain it's, it's a little bit tougher than uh, I guess here in Germany but um, yeah we, we, we're hanging in there doing doing the yeah. online thing and I mean Wales, well, so Wales is uh, even oh, you, more of a lockdown than okay. England so, oh I didn't yeah. know you were in Wales so it's all the same country it's all the same country but it's all it's all okay. weird so, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we are gathered here basically uh, to talk about your um, bottleneck and island co-released prints for your Disney series. There were uh, six of them in total, and actually, actually a seventh one I did not know about, but we will talk about that in a bit. And um, yeah, first of all, let's take a look at the Bambi. Uh, I'm sorry, not the the one 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 hundred one Dalmatians one. How how did it all start? I mean, with the uh, con in terms of contact, how did you get contacted by Bottleneck or Island, or did you contact them that you had the series prepared? How how did it happen? No, well, it was um, Joe from Bottleneck. <clears throat> he contacted me. Basically, I've done quite a few pieces for Disney and mm -hmm. for Poster Posse, and I use that sort of uh, the composition I use is where there's the. the person is central yeah. at the bottom sort of you know looking off into the distance because i'm a bit too lazy <laughs> to do faces <laughs> um and i've done i've done some tickets for uh disney and i've done um posters for poster posse and joe bottleneck just said you know can we do some classic disney in that style so i was like yeah love disney not a problem it was up to me what um, films I chose. Um, I mean, there's a few more that I've got lined up for hopefully for a second scene, mm -hmm. for a second set. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Really good and how fun. was the contact with Island Prince? Because they also had a run of it or uh, some, some... Yeah, I had no, I had no contact with them. Oh, that was okay. all through okay. Joe um, Bottleneck. Um, I've uh, had no contact with Island, but um, yeah, okay. that was cool. Haven't even released through them yet because that's the first time I've had anything released through. Yeah, I mean, so I, I cool. heard, I, I did not know um, about Island Prints before, but they had a couple. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, there were a bunch of Disney-related prints that came through Island. So um, yeah. yeah, I think it's a Disney release. Uh, they do just di Disney releases, right? As far as I know, yeah, I've, I've, I've been aware of them for, for a year or two because um, I think everything bottleneck do Disney-related. They do mm. through Ireland as well. Um, I think they're based in the UK. Speaking so. of galleries, by the way, I just uh, I just wanted to comment on your shirt because your shirt is great. Oh, yeah. And Matt Ferguson, he's such a great artist. Yeah, I, I talked about uh, his piece earlier in the in the release episode here, so uh, this this is covered. And uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to to a bottleneck in this case because they were so nice to hook me up with the timed edition ones um, because I. 
but I, I actually been doing a good job i guess that's what they were saying so try to keep up the good work yeah. and uh yeah thanks thanks for bottom like thanks thank you guys for well i i was going to buy uh one of the posters um i was hoping to get one of the um yeah variants uh, which i couldn't get because they went in like a millisecond I, oh i have to say um, so if, I'm going to see if I can try and get one of Matt's mm. APs. Probably won't be able to, yeah. but we'll see. I have to I'm say I got best. lucky. I got both variants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, so that, that was kind of nice. So I can't wait when they come and uh, hang them up. It's going to be nice. Yeah, that probably the best Star Wars post I've seen in years. Mm. I mean, absolutely. And I actually had to get them because like, uh, the, um, you can see it uh, maybe in the background here on, on, on this side there, like the, the, the first triptych. Yeah. that Matt did uh, for Star Wars and uh, for the original yeah. trilogy. And that's like basically what got me started into collecting and alternative movie posters. So, I oh, really, yeah. I, I Even though the side, I know exactly which ones they are. With the, the, with the ship. The, um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Going into the, yeah. yeah, Matt's got, I've got quite a few of his pieces. I've got um, Stranger Things down in the living room. I've been on the wall for about mm. five years. It's the... All my friends know I'm an artist. It's quite, uh, it's a pain in the bum actually, because they'll come into the house and if they've never seen it before. They'll go straight to Matt's print. Go, oh my god, that's amazing! Oh, man. When did you do that? And I'm like, I didn't do it. <laughs> did it? <laughs> that's that's tough. Um, I understand, but I mean, Matt is a great artist. I have to say that as well. So yeah. He's brilliant. I I will have yeah. him for uh, uh, for interview in I think two weeks or so. So that will oh, be cool. a nice talk. Can't wait uh, to have that little. Um, conversation with him okay let's get back to your prints um as i said we were okay. talking about uh 101 dalmatians um you all you also sent me some um progress work in progress f uh, pictures i just put it in the image um yeah. how how did you go about it well, this is pretty much the um if i ever get a my first initial concept sketch this is what i'll set this is basically what i'll send off to joe mm. and he'll pass it on to disney for approval and that's the same with whoever I'm working with, whether it's Grey Matter Art or Post Posse. Um, a lot of artists will send something that's even less riff like that. I mean, it's really sketchy, but some people will send it so it's like literally a few swirls mm. and stuff like that. I think Matt Ferguson is one of those. He'll send a really, really, really um, sc scratchy sketch. Well, I, I can't do that because I always think it's not going to get yeah. past the first um, approval. So. Yeah. So that's pretty much how I send my I mean, first work in progress. To I mean, that's that's very elaborate. I mean, it's basically when when you compare um, it to, I'm, I'm just pulled up the the, the the. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. So how yeah. is it? How is it? Um, when it like, how did you get the idea of like what to put in or or? And by the way, how is it? How do you how do you draw it? Is it is it like actual drawing or is it digital drawing? It's digital. So. Um, Wacom. I've got an Intuos uh, yeah. um, and a Cintiq, but I've never okay. used a Cintiq yet. So it's just sketching on the. the um, now I'll tell you what. I'll have a pad and I'll have. I'll do a little thumbnail yeah. sort of composition with Biro or something. Yeah. A ballpoint pen, uh, and then straight onto the onto Photoshop and get drawing. Um, lots of references up for the characters. Um, which is usually a pain because I'm doing mm -hmm. things from behind and there aren't usually many yeah. references for anything from behind, you know, so, but yeah, just getting the composition down is the main mm -hmm. thing. It's the most important thing, um, the idea. And the, yeah. the, uh, Why did you pick this as exact scene for the 101 Dalmatians? I, I just I just love the snow. I love anything that's sort of it's a bit Christmassy, and I, I, you know um, I thought I knew all the other pieces were going to be either in you know in a, a summer forest type setting or a bright sort of summer sort of setting, and I just thought I want you know I want a, a nice Christmassy sort of snowy sort of scene. And I like playing with colours um, with snow. I think snow uh, it's quite hard to do, but when, if you get it right. It can look really good, so I thought, yeah, we'll get one one okay. picture in. The yeah, snow. it does look really good. I have to say that. So, um, <clears throat> okay, cool. One, um, yeah. how's I mean, you have kids? I I heard, and um, how how do they like yeah, yeah. this 
Disney series you do? Is are they <laughs> really fans of it, or are they just gonna say, "Oh, I Dad, no, that's not like the the animated movie or something like that"? No, they they think it's quite cool. Um, that you know, it's, they they are used to it, but they still think it's cool that I'm doing, this, especially for things that they enjoy yeah. watching as well. Um, like my daughter's into Marvel. <laughs> she loves Marvel. So anything Spider-Man or, you know, anything like that, she thinks is brilliant. Um, she's, she, my daughter, she's only 10, but she's, she's, um, shows more interest in than, than my son. He's uh, just on his games <laughs> all day. My daughter's got more of an artistic yeah. sort of, um, art. So she's, okay. yeah, she's um, let's get into the next one. The next one I want to talk about is the Bambi one. How how did this? I mean, it's basically the same concept, so we don't have to talk about the concept anymore. But yeah. um, I, I, what I want to know for every piece is um, what are you, what, like, why did you pick this particular scene and this particular characters to put in there? Well, quite often I won't. I won't actually have a, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll sort of make my own scene mm -hmm. up as well, sort of thing. So it's, you can tell it's from the film, but that isn't actually a, a specific scene from the film. Um, it's the same when I did my, um, I don't know if you can see yeah. the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know which one you're talking about, though. Yeah, so they're not, they're not actually from a specific scene. It's just my okay. interpretation of, of the film. So um, basically every one of them, was designed so they all complemented each other so that's why they've got a very similar composition and they're all mm. you know um that's how they sort of set out but i just i thought yeah just i want a central avenue through the trees looking into the distance nice mm. and balanced i tend to go for a um quite symmetrical sort of compositions yeah. in my work so yeah okay, and and um is it um Do do you think the whole series would be uh, would be great to uh, to hang up like all next to each other like maybe in a child's bedroom for example is is that one of your thoughts you would yeah. love to have it there yeah have separate yeah are the separate sort of frames or some people I don't know if you could do it with these but some people will put you know, like one long frame and put them all in with a, a mat or a border separating them but I, I would personally probably have them separate you could have three on one yeah. wall three on another. yeah i think that's uh, i two, yeah two, I, two. i actually <laughs> did like when i uh put the background in for our little talk uh, i put like th like the, the color scheme yeah. together i mean you have the blues with the with the dalmatian fantasia yeah. and peter pan and then you have the greens with the rescuers bambi and uh, winnie the pooh so that so i tried to I think I alternate that, that fits think, in yeah. perfectly together and um yeah. And that's sorry. That that's another thing that whilst doing them, you've got to consider. I think I was going to do uh, another piece with green, and I thought there's mm -hmm. too many green uh, pieces. So um, I think I ended up doing Fantasia to um, bring okay. back another blue, bluish sort of picture. So you've got to consider yeah. all. Of them that's that's right. Well. I mean, uh, and I think it would like make a great addition to any child's bedroom because those are basically the movies I grew up oh. with as well as a kid. So. That's uh, it's yeah. it's a must-have definitely. Um, what if what if I got in the in the yeah. first one um, to ask you how how do you like the the one hundred one Dalmatians movie? I love it. I love any. I love the the scratchy sort of um, the scratchy sort of style of, of drawing of the animation. I love that anything from mm -hmm. the sixties and seventies. That that style. Uh, I I love it. It's so um, it's just so good. Um, and there's been quite a few good. Pendulum Dalmatian prints out as well. I think uh, um, I forgot what his name is now. Burton. I don't um, remember. I don't remember. Uh, I, think, I, I think I saw a couple back back when, but I don't remember. I saw um, Thought Bubble. I actually spoke to him at Thought Bubble, um, and his second name is Burton. I can't yeah, remember his okay. first name. Is. Anyway, he's done a brilliant uh, 101 Dalmatian. I think it's where um, the uh, the guys play the okay. piano and yeah. Okay, and so, um. We, we're going to do in the end, we're going to do a little ranking. So, Sorry, Jonathan, Jonathan Bird. Jonathan Bird, okay. okay. I will I will check it up, put it in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. In the end, we will do a little ranking of all those six movies. So you have to you have to rank in the end. So just keep that keep that in mind. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. And yeah. and uh, talking Bambi yeah. as well, how, how, how high is Bambi on the scale? Just a little teaser. Is it higher or lower than Dalmatians? 
Okay. Lower for me, lower. I know that's. Uh, it's it's okay. It's it's work. your choice. <laughs> yeah, but. Lower. I do like okay. it. Okay. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the Fantasia one. What were your thoughts on that? Why did you pick yeah. the brooms and like Mickey doing like his thing? Well, that's, I think, you know, in the, in the film, there's like, I think there's four. Is it? There's four? I can't remember now. <laughs> I watched it a few weeks ago. But anyway, that's the, that's the, the clip mm. that everyone remembers. Um, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, so I had to go with that because that was just the most iconic part of it. And because it's quite a sort of, it's quite a trippy sort of thrill, a film, I thought that was the one where I could have it the least uh, um, coherent in the way it looks. I mean, it was a bit dreamy looking where, you know, there's nothing, there's no sort of story going on. It's just a bit, I don't know how to explain it. You know, um, the, the, the way the, the brooms yeah. are coming down the stairs towards Mickey. That actually doesn't happen in the film, I don't think. It's it's all a bit dreamy. Um, so I thought because it's quite a trippy film, I could sort of play around with that one a bit more than mm. the other five. If, yeah, yeah, if I, got, I, got I, mean. I got it. I got it. It's yeah, it sounds it's a good explanation. I, I really like it. It looks dreamy, and it's, especially when you look at the, like the like the little star-ish glitter that is that is on both sides yeah. and then um, represents the water and the kind of staircase and then how it all comes down and being realized. Yeah. So it is basically from a dream to reality. I think it's a yeah. Whereas the other the other pieces could be a, like like I say they're not, not exactly yeah. a scene from the films. It could be a scene from the films. Whereas this is just a bit more dreaming. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. had a bit more room to play around with. Okay, um, well. the next one uh, will be the Peter Pan one. Let's take a look at that. You 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 also use like the the glitter glitter magic dust for that. Um, Got to have that. How, yeah. How... <laughs> yeah, like like a few bits of stars and you know nebulas and all that sort of stuff. If I can get if I can get away with it, I'll do. <laughs> how it, yeah. um, why did you pick Neverland in this case and maybe not, for example? Um, the, the boat or something like that or uh the uh, where, where tiger lily lives like the, the the indigenous village probably just yeah um probably i think it, um it just fits in with the rest of them the, the composition it's all down to the composition again and a little bit of laziness as well if i can get away with doing the least amount of detail <laughs> then i'll do it so the idea of doing a, a a boat, you know, Captain Hook's boat up close, you know, all the details just um, daunt me. So, landscapes you can sort of get away with um, less detail. It's all about um, having an impression yeah. of the landscape rather than closer detail. So, but yeah, again, it's down to the composition. It's everything sort of matches, you know, everything else. So, uh, that was the best sort of um, composition I could come up with for that, for, for Peter Pan. I mean, there's yeah. so many scenes in all the films that you know i could take inspiration from but um and again i think with peter pan that's probably the most iconic sort of bit where they fly to neverland so again going with that most recognizable okay, thing um i would say one of the movies that is not that um not not like like the fans don't maybe love it that much i would say at least i didn't and which is the rescuers i i mean i watched it i watched i think there was a tv show for that as well i watched that but in the end i yeah. wasn't such a big fan but how how did your piece connect into the series and your thoughts on that well that's probably the most um personal to me because that's the first oh, film i ever saw okay in cinema interesting now, so. so that is actually my favourite one, because it's like I say, it's, um, I think I watched it just before I saw Star Wars. I was very, mm. very, very young, but I do remember. So for me, that was the the top one. And it, it, I, did, I sent that work in progress and Joe sent it to Disney and they actually came back and said, no, we're not going to, we don't want to do wrestling. Okay. So that's why, that's why I came up with Robin Hood. Anyway, they came back a bit later and I went, actually, yeah, we'll go with it. I think there was something to do with some, I don't know, there's some legal issues or something specifically with wrestlers. I, I can't remember what it was, but 
then they decided, yeah, we'll go with it. So um, it was back on track. So, yeah. And it just basically, it was my favorite film out of the... Uh, Okay, so yeah, we have the ranking here already, so no surprises there then now. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah, top of it would be Rescuers, just purely basically okay. because it's the first film I saw. Okay, I see. Yeah. And um, yeah. the scene you, or like the, this kind of image you picked uh, because this is what you remembered? Uh, okay. It was my favorite scene. It was the, you know, fire, fire up the engines, Ermin uh, uh, Rude. I forgot his name now. The little dragonfly. It's my favourite film. I forgot <laughs> the name of the dragonfly. Uh, I think it was Evan Evan Rude. Evan Rude, that was it. Um, and it's just the music, and it was you know it was um, the, the uh, racing through the swamp, and it was brilliant. I just mm. loved that scene. And again, another iconic scene with the leaf. Yeah. You know, as the speedboat. So I had Perfect. to go with it. Um, okay, and the last one we're going to talk about, or almost last one, is the Winnie the Pooh one. How yeah. how did this happen? Another classic, another classic, and also another sort of personal one. We had loads of Winnie the Pooh stuff when my kids were born. We had the mobiles and the, the mm -hmm. theme tune was just ingrained into my head. Um, so I think a lot of people who've got kids have had Winnie the Pooh at some point in their. I have life, to say, so. it was never part of yeah. my life when I was a kid. <laughs> I don't know why, I, I, and it, uh, it's still to date. I, it's had it's. It, it's a it's a it's a weird one, Winnie the Pooh, because um, the format of the, the film came out. It was very. It was like the book. It was, the book was telling the yeah. story, and uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, and I've have been told that I've missed mm -hmm. out Piglet on that one. Well, no, he's they're going to visit Piglet. Oh, so okay, so. that's nice. What, that, that was on purpose, or did you just realize that later? <laughs> That's late, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forgot to put Piglet okay, in it. Fair enough. But now they're going to visit Piglet. Piglet's a bit poorly, and he's a bit ill, okay, so okay. they're going to visit Piglet. It's cheer nice. him up. They're going to cheer him. The, 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 is the, the, the title is just Winnie the Pooh, or shouldn't it, the, the title of the, of the print sh uh, should be then uh, Visiting Piglet, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hindsight. Yeah. It's okay. It's fine. I dig it. Yeah, I do it quite a lot of times. I I'll make a mistake in my artwork, and it's too late to do anything. So I'll just come up with a. An no, excuse. no, no. There's no yeah. excuse. That's that's how it was supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. And there was a there's let's get like a hidden print, uh, that didn't make it uh, make it make it in the end, uh, which is the Robin Hood one. I. I, I'm seeing this yeah. for the first time now, and I really enjoy this one. It's a really cool print. I'm I'm so sad that it didn't. Well, I don't even know if I'm allowed to show it because I haven't asked Joe Bottleneck. I keep it's okay, Joe. Joe. You know, uh, <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Um, this was too similar to something that uh, Mark Chilcott okay, yeah. had done. I think I sent this to Joe, and he said it's really good. But he said Mark Chilcott's done something very similar, but from okay. the front. So they're coming, they're, they're coming towards you. And I've since seen his print, and yeah, it is. So what I'll probably do is I will I will still do a Robin Hood print, but I will change it around a bit so it'll be a little bit okay. different to yeah. what you can see there. So, um, so I'm hoping to do another six classic mm -hmm. Disney prints for either, I don't know, the end of the okay, year cool. or next year because um, they're really popular. So, okay. Um, I've had yeah, and how yeah. Um, how was the decision making? Did, could you could you decide which ones you wanted to do and like present them and say, yeah, let's do this? Or yeah, um... yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh, I had I've, I've had um, I had uh, I had hardly any um, feedback really from Disney. I think a couple of things I had was the size of Winnie the Pooh was slightly off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fine now, and they sent me a size guide okay. of the characters in Winnie the Pooh and. You know, but apart from that, I was free reign. I could choose the films, um, and hopefully I'll be able to okay. choose the next ones. Had a lot of people suggesting uh, films, so there's still yeah, loads I to mean, choose from. There's so, so many, so many to choose from. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. so now let's uh, commence the ranking. Uh, we have those six movies, 101 Dalmatians, uh, Bambi, Fantasia... Uh, Peter Pan, The Rescuers, and Winnie the Pooh. You already uh, gave gave away that The Rescuers is number one, but uh, we're gonna start out from the back. Who's yeah. who's your ranked six movie of this of those six? 
I, I think okay. it's Fantasia. Okay. Purely because I've seen it a few times, and it's the only scene I ever remember is the mm. the one I've done, the Sorcerer's yeah. Apprentice. Um, and I think, I think as an adult, I, pre- I appreciate it more now as an adult because of the music. But when I was a kid, I, I remember yeah. being really disappointed that there was no dialogue it was all music <laughs> and and that sort of stuck with me in a way and i should get over it but yeah i wanted a cartoon with talking yeah, yeah, yeah. you know story and, and, and so that's always i can appreciate it for what it is but in my heart it's okay number okay six. number five uh number five would be winnie the pooh okay yeah, why is that pooh. why is that number five uh, i'm I just, I, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> tough question. I don't tough know. question. I think it's, um, Winnie the Pooh. Um, I see, I love them all. That's the thing. It's really hard. I do love Winnie the Pooh, but it's all a little bit too slow for me, a bit too, well, I don't know, a bit too, um, even when I was, I'm going back to yeah. when I was a kid as well, you know, watch. I found it a little bit. There wasn't enough action mm. going on, I suppose. And I, you know, yeah. I, I'd watch them, uh, but no. So yeah, when it, I mean, I love it. But I mean, stuff. They're movie. all good movies. And I've, yeah, I can't think of a good reason. I okay. I feel really bad now. <laughs> maybe maybe, film, maybe yeah. it's gonna come to you so, <laughs> when we hear your number four. <laughs> number four. So I've got a. What, what we, we got left uh, uh, Peter Pan, the uh, Bambi, Peter and Pan. One Hundred and One Dalmatians. Yes. So Peter Pan. No. Uh, Bambi. Bambi. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I would. I would say so too. Yeah. yeah and again, I think it, the the lack of uh, again, it's dialogue with me. It's the there was, there was mm. hardly any dialogue. I think the only person who spoke it was the <laughs> yeah. Um there were some absolutely amazing scenes in it, mm. emotional scenes, as everyone knows. Um, the fire scene, you know, where the, the forest on fire is absolutely amazing. But as a whole, I just found it it not, it wasn't quite an mm-hmm. epic film for me. It was quite a short sort of, it was, it was almost like um, it was presented in those old Disney natural yeah. history films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? that when they used to be around. It was almost a bit like that. So, um Again, lack of dialogue, um, and there wasn't much mm-hmm. of a story really. It's just, you know, Bambi yeah, yeah, finding yeah. his feet and becoming an adult. So yeah, that's number. Okay. Three. I think. Number four. Number, number four. Th- exactly. Number yeah, three yeah. is what? That would be. Um, we've got Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Yeah, okay. Peter Pan. The good yeah. choice. I mean, I love, I love uh, like all the stuff that came out like stuff- later on. I mean, there are parts and it makes me make me cringe now because it's a bit, you know, it's not very politically correct, and there are some that sort of make you cringe a bit. But um, it's really action packed. I mean, that is a proper. That's probably one of the most action packed Disney films. I'm not all about action packed. <laughs> like, I, I do like a slow film and a, you know a, a thoughtful film, but I think with Disney, I like it to have a bit of. Mm-hmm. excitement and you know okay and then it leaves us number two uh obviously uh which one's left the one one hundred one dalmatians why why is that why did that make number two that's just a, i mean as a film it is a better film than the rescuers which i got at number one um i've got um but it's it's just a perfect film for me it's the style is perfect it's beautiful you know the back the backgrounds to the animations, you know, is absolutely. Um, I love it. The, ska- the sketchy style of the, you know, the characters. Yeah. If you, you know, if you can zoom in, you can actually see the the, the sketchy sort of uh, brush strokes on the, the line work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great story, you know. It's just, I love it. And like I say, I, it's a better film than The Rescuers, I think. Okay. Um, but Rescuers just pips it because it's, you know, it's a sentimental thing. Yeah. Me. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. And one last note: um, how, how would, uh, or on which, uh, or between which one would Robin Hood go? Since didn't make it, but Ooh. if yeah, I, well, that probably will make the next set, so that'll probably be top. I think. Okay. That's 
Fair well. enough. That's also like one of my favorites. Yeah. So I didn't want you the film. Do you want to make a suggestion for set two? I mean, I've, I've had I've had quite a few suggestions. Lady in the Tramp. Yeah, um, def- yeah. Lady in Tramp is a good one. Um, uh, yeah. Well, what's it called? Um, I just know the a German name now. Schneewittchen um, and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, Snow, Snow White. White. Uh, thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's that's a good one. So I'll probably go with with. Yeah, again, classics. Yeah, so. also uh, the uh, Sleeping Beauty would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, my daughter's yeah. Yeah, and what else there? Um, Pinocchio? Ah, I never thought of that one. Yeah, so that's another. See, I've got so many, and I've got to get it down to six. I've had, you know, um, I think the, the, the most modern I'm, gonna, I'm willing to go is The Little Mermaid. I think anything after that to me is a bit too. Okay. And they're still classics. But they're when not. was when was Little Mermaid? Was it eighty nine or something like that? Something like that. Eight ninety, I think, or ninety one. It might be eighty nine. Yeah, somewhere right. somewhere around yeah. there, area, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Aladdin yeah. and Lion King don't make the cut. No, I've I've done those. Um, I, well, I did the the, the live action. Yeah. Post I think I remember. Those. Yeah. Yeah, and so if I did if I did the classic versions, it'd probably be very similar in what, style. Anyway. Yeah. What was what was the the Lion King the 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 old the, the older one or, or no yours one? What what was what did it show? I don't. It was uh, it was it was uh, Simba. Oh, in the footstep. Okay. Pumba, Timon and Pumba, and they were like walking. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly the same sort of uh, concept. The back of them walking in the middle. Well, you... With the rock, pride rock in the background. Yeah, you know what would be like a crazy scene if you would do like the canyon, and Simba yeah. standing oh, by yeah, Mufasa. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and um, all you know, so the thing is, I would be like, there's too many the, the antelopes. That's in that. That's whoa, too many antelopes to draw. <laughs> Just copy paste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have done that. Don't don't knock that. I do that sometimes. Just slightly change the odd thing here and there, and uh, yeah, yeah. It, it copy and paste is uh, or clone brush. You know, it's, yeah, it, it works occasionally. It works sometimes. It doesn't, but yeah, yeah. But uh, as for classical Disney, I think uh, with Little Mermaid, that was that. Was the, I mean, they'd gone through a bit of a rough patch before yeah. Little Mermaid. I think haven't they, they, they did, yeah. And that was the the resurgence of classic Disney, and you know the way they are mm. now is just like the monsters, aren't they? Disney exactly. But um, I've decided anything before Little Mermaid is, is fair game. Okay. So. so perfect. We are excited to the new series that's going to come out hopefully this year. And uh, it's going to grace yeah. a lot of more uh, child's bedrooms. And um, yeah, we, uh, we're excited. And we will have you on for the next ranking of your Disney series. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for doing this thank again, you. Andy. It was a pleasure. This is uh, one of many, I hope. And uh well, yeah, it's the first time I've ever done it, and um, if I've come across as a bit... No, I'm you're sorry, all good. But... <laughs> Those are fine. It was a fine talk, like all the other ones I did, all nice artists, and uh, uh, you you, you go in there well. And we will definitely come back. If you if you like this kind of format, We will. I, I would love to have you on for a longer talk, like an interview one, to look at your whole art you did, not just your Disney series. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, so... I'll be more prepared. Perfect. Well. <laughs> but you did good. Remember, we were prepared. Nobody, nobody knew. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andy. And uh, this is this is it for this episode. Next week we will have on. Um, let me check. Um, it will be on. Scott C will be on with a long interview one, and we will maybe have something in store for the San Diego Comic Con. That is an online version now that we will do with Scott. But more on that maybe in the future. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye.